Hi everyone, I'm Morteza. I'm a uh, PhD candidate at uh, MIC EMIT. I'm also a research assistant in Jack Clinic Group in Langer Lab. I'm very excited to be presenting here and I uh, hope everyone is uh, doing well, staying safe. So a little bit of background into what actually our subgroup uh, sp uh, specifically works on in Langer Lab. So we, we utilize a wide range of tools in machine learning and engineering design, biology, micro and nanotechnology and uh, Material science, um, basically we in integrate all these tools to basically uh, develop next generation of uh, micro uh, devices for drug delivery applications. And basically they can have a wide range of applications in cancer research, in immunology, and in, in other areas of um, biomedical uh, uh, research. So basically it's a highly multidisciplinary uh, area that our uh, group works on. Uh, a little bit of background into the technology uh, more specifically. So basically in 20, back in 2017, we developed a, a multi-layer uh, manufacturing process, uh, kind of a microfabrication process so that was published in Science. And basically the, the way it works is that uh, we, we can uh, basically uh, put together multiple uh, features and basically make uh, hollow micro devices. So in this case, for example, we have the particle base and uh, image to the left, and we can um, um, basically fill the cavity at the center of this base with, with a solution of a specific drug. And then this kind of field base is going to be uh, subsequently uh, uh, capped with a secondary uh, layer of polymer or any other material. And this base and cap kind of uh, are fused together with a little bit of heating and then they form an integrated structure, uh, which called, kind of is a shell that protects the drug against the environment. So in, in very uh, simple words, it is a hot encapsulation technique because imagine we have a coffee cup, which has this kind of hollow uh, structure inside and it's uh, uncapped. Then we kind of uh, fill it with the solution of a drug, a coffee in this case, and then we just cap it. And basically it forms a protective barrier uh, that protects the drug or therapeutic uh, cargo against the environment. And in the first generation of microparticle, actually what was interesting was that the base and the cap uh, were made from the same material, same um, uh, polymer in this case. And this kind of unique structure, unique hollow structure, uh, provides us this uh, pulsatile release, meaning that, for example, um, in the few few days, and we have a time um, lag, meaning that we, we don't have any release of the cargo uh, with, um, for a specific amount of time. For example, say seven to um, seven days to several days, uh, for example, a month, and then all of a sudden, the entire cargo actually releases in a pulsatile way. And by changing the material, we can actually fine tune the release time point and uh, get the release, uh, um, particles that release at any time between a few days up to a few weeks. So this is, this is actually a great uh, aspect of this technology. It uh, enables us to inject multiple feature, multiple particles with multiple release time points with only a single injection. Uh, but m moving forward to the second generation of microparticles, uh, that something that I've been basically working as one of the projects uh, in my, during my PhD, uh, we, uh, we, we decided to um, use different materials in the cap and in the base. And uh, it, this, this basically gave us the opportunity to um, um, incorporate multiple drugs into the microparticle system. So the pink color here, um, represent a fluorescent dye that is in the cap and not necessarily in the cavity that I showed uh, earlier. And this basically what it gives us is this kind of uh, multiple uh, co-delivery uh, capability. So we can, for example, deliver drug A in a pulsatile way uh, at the specific time point and, and drug B uh, from the cap uh, with, with a sustained uh, mechanism, uh, sustained uh, and linear release kinetics and also drug C, which is also again incorporating the cap with a nonlinear uh, uh, manner. And you might ask that how I came up with this idea. So basically this is just a, a particle at day zero. The blue shows the, um, shows the uh, is a model drug that is incorporated in the core and the red shows another drug in the cap. 
So when I started, so this is just a day zero. Uh, particles are just what they look like in the lab. So I started uh, an in vitro uh, experiment, put them into some water. Actually what happened uh, I, I, at first that day one, I was kind of, I had, had some hope that it might, might, might or might not work. Uh, but uh, have, have a sim I had a similar face to this microparticle, so I was nervous. And uh, after day three, uh, I had some hope that, okay, the signals uh, getting uh, shows some promise. And uh, at this time, I was very excited because the, everything was kind of working and uh, yeah, the system was working as planned. But again, the, um, basically, it was, I came to this realization that it was just in vitro. So and what if it, uh, what happens to in, in vivo in animal models? So I'm pretty much like this and uh, planning for future experiments. Um, so in terms of acknowledgement, I'd like to acknowledge uh, our group and the Gates Foundation and Cook Institute.